Hello, I'm Calpurnia Adams, and I'm an actress in Hollywood. Have you ever seen a transsexual or whatnot and had a question that you wanted to ask? I mean, who hasn't? Well, I'm a transsexual woman, and I've been asked every question under the sun. So I thought tonight I would share with you some of the stupidest questions I've ever been asked. So today, welcome to Bad Questions with Calpurnia Adams. Are you the kind of person who has a lot of questions? I know I am. Like, why is the sky blue? Why doesn't mommy love me? Why can't I stop drinking? Well, if you have lots of questions, I have all the answers. You know, I get asked shockingly inappropriate personal questions all the time by well-meaning or just simply moronic strangers who feel like they have a right to pry into my life just because I exist. And I get asked these questions routinely again and again and again and again. <clears throat> but it doesn't bother me. I like to help people. I've compiled a list of what I call bad questions because despite what you've been told by your college professors, <laughs> well, maybe you didn't go to college, but despite what whoever you get your learning from told you, there is such a thing as a bad question. This list might seem a little bit angry, but I dare to say that after so many years in the public eye, I doubt very many people would be able to answer these questions and handle their asking as judiciously and kindly as I've endeavored to do. So I hope you'll bear with me if I chap your ass, insult you, tear you down, make you feel like a fool, <laughs> just asking a question. Let's begin. Bad question number one. I know this question is on your list of bad questions, but I really want to know. That don't ask stuff doesn't apply to me, does it? Yes, ignoramus, it does. You're probably one of those people who gets in the 20 items or less checkout lane with a cart full of 50 items. You probably go through life thinking things don't apply to you. Rules, laws, social conventions, general accepted standards of politeness, but they all do. No, you can't ask these questions. Bad question number two. Don't be offended when I ask you this, but dot dot dot. In every case, any question following that sentence has been offensive. Just don't do it. If you have to preface it that way, it's going to be offensive. Don't ask. I'm not interested in educating you. Bad question number three. Did your surgery hurt? Well, dum-dum. There's this thing called anesthesia, and it's a medical advancement that allows doctors to chemically numb either parts of your body or your entire body and consciousness so that you don't feel any pain during surgery. It's really amazing. And I don't know what back alley doctors you go to, but mine uses anesthesia. So no, my surgery didn't hurt. Bad question number four. What is or was your real name? This question's a biggie. My real name is Calpurnia Adams, dumbass. What are you really asking here? When people ask me this question, what I hear is that you either consider my current identity to be a fabrication, a lie, a put on, a costume, or a joke, and you want to get at the real truth behind who I really am. Implication, a man. Or they, um, just want to have something to hold on to, to put me back in my place. Who do you think you are, Calpurnia? Pretending to be a woman. I know your real name, and you'll always be Frank Smith, or Butch Jones, or 
whatever to me. You, well, don't ask this. It's none of your business. Hey, but everybody knows that Marilyn Monroe's old name was Norma Jean. Come on, Calpurnia. We just want to know. Well, dumb f When you know Marilyn's old name, it still doesn't change her gender in your mind. She's still a woman, whether you call her Norma Jean or Marilyn Monroe. When you talk to a trans woman about her old name, it's overlaying a perception of gender onto her using that name that is, is very hurtful and rude. You know, most all of us in the public eye eventually have our old names, photographs, and identities outed by someone from our past. It happens, and I've been through a lot in my life, and I can handle it when it does. All the same though, I just want you to know that when you ask this question, or when you use that old information, I'm hating you with a burning, white-hot, destructive hatred that's warmer than the deepest, fiery pits of the lowest level of hell. Hey, but so-and-so told me their old name. I know the tranny who does my nails at the mall, and she told me right away that her name used to be Bob. Well, a lot of trans women lack validation in their lives. Nobody is ever telling them, good job, or you look great, or much of anything. So they're left feeling eager to please. They want to say anything just to get a pat on the back. And this is a very sad situation that a lot of trans women find themselves in. So maybe they told you their old name just because they wanted your approval. I feel bad for these women in that situation, and I really feel bad that you're such a low-life scumbag that you would exploit their need just to dig a little piece of dirty information out of them. Ah, 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 that's pretty bad of you. Bad question number five. Can I see a picture of you from before? Pretty similar to question number four, no? but it's a visual thing instead of an informational or auditory thing. No, you can't see a picture of me from before. There are plenty of them out there, and they'll pop up as I move along in my career, I'm sure, but I'm not gonna help you humiliate me. You know, can I see a picture of you on the worst day of your life? Can I see a picture of you at your fattest, at your ugliest, at your most broken out, with your worst haircut, maybe. Can I see a picture of you at your most depressed, your loneliest, your most self-hating? That's the picture you're looking at if you look at a picture of me from before. So enjoy raking your eyes across all that sadness and misery. But I prefer to present the image of myself now to people. Happy-ish, doing as good as I can, and trying to make my way through the world which is often pretty stupid. Bad question number six. Anything about my sex life? Don't ask this, you perverted freak. I don't care what you're doing with whatever morons you can dredge up to bump uglies with on the Friday night at 3 a.m. after 17 beers that makes up your weekend nights. And I don't want to share what I do in the intimacy of my own private time either. Bad question number seven. Anything about my genitals? Again, you perverted, disgusting freak. Don't ask me anything about my genitals unless I offer. You wouldn't ask a coworker, a friend, or probably even a family member probing intimate questions about their genitals unless you had a pre-existing relationship that was kind of on that level. You know, this is often a favorite question from men gay or straight, and usually their questions involve the words cut and off. My brain usually turns off when I hear this question because it's gross and weird and morbid. Just because I know that most of you are dumb f**ks, I'll educate you a little bit on what happens during vaginoplasty. That's known as sex change surgery to you dummies. In vaginoplasty, Doctors don't cut off genitals. 
They refashion existing tissues and nerves, sort of going from out to in, to make a fully functioning, beautiful, sensate vulva and vagina for um, male to female transsexuals. So um, that's about all you need to know really. If you're desperate for more information, you can go to www.tsroadmap.com to get the full 411 on what goes on in our pants and that little thing we call a life that surrounds our genitals. As a side note, womanhood is not defined by a lack of a penis. I hear a lot of dummies, college jocks, frat boys, construction worker types making jokes about, oh, if someone's penis gets cut off, then they're a girl. Well, surprise, women are more than the lack of a penis. Women have their own genitals. They're internal, true, and most of you men out there have probably never seen them or at least not very much outside the family. But women have their own genitalia that have nothing to do with having or not having a penis. And to be honest, I've known a lot of trans women, both pre-op and post-op, who I would definitely consider women, no matter what their genital or surgical status. Basically, just stay out of their pants unless you're dating. So to summarize, no, you can't see it. And no, I don't want to answer any more questions about it, at least not in the first 20 minutes of our acquaintance, unless you buy me a steak dinner first. And no, Sizzler doesn't count. Bad question number eight. Do you date straight guys or gay guys? Well, stupid. If you think about it, what do gay guys like in a partner? They tend to like muscles and beard stubble and manly sweat and big butchness and, and, you know, Brad Pitt or Vin Diesel or whatever. And what do straight guys tend to look for in a sexual partner? Softness, femininity, flowing, silky, smooth hair, curves, you know, just generally female characteristics. So if gay guys like Brad Pitt and straight guys like ladies, you do the math. Even someone with your tiny brain can figure it out if I lay it out like that for you. I date straight guys, dumbass. Bad question number nine. Are you a man or a woman? Don't ever ask a human being this question. If you can't tell, you don't need to know. Bad question number 10. Girl, are you a tranny? <laughs> I usually get this one in gay bars, and it's usually coming from fags who already know that I'm transsexual. They're just trying to let me know I'm not getting away with anything. It's kind of like saying, wow, you look really slim. Are you wearing a girdle? Backhanded compliment much? I'll backhand ya. Bad question number 11. I think of you as a woman. It's not a question really, but it had to be mentioned. If you say this, you don't really. You've never said this to your mom or sisters or female friends. You only say it to people that you don't really think of as a woman. We know what you're saying. Bad question number 12. Again, not really a question, but it bears mentioning. Part one, I've seen Tootsie and I know what you're going through. Well, I've seen Dumb and Dumber and I know what you're going through. Part two, I've seen Silence of the Lambs, and I don't want a transsexual teaching my children. Well, I've seen American Psycho, and I don't want a straight yuppie teaching mine. Not that I'd have any children. I haven't started a sweatshop yet. Part three, I've seen transsexual porn, and I think you're hot, 
slash gross. Well, I've seen MILF porn, and I think your mom is hot slash gross. Bad question number 13. Hey, I know this person named whatever, back in wherever, who was transsexual. Do you know him? Well, I know this dumbass named whatever, back in wherever. Do you know him? Bad question number 14. Say, my hairdresser is a transsexual, slash, the girl who does my nails is a transsexual, slash, the checkout person at my gas station is a transsexual. Guess what? I don't give a f Do you tell your Asian friends, wow, the person who served me lunch was Asian? I don't care who you know that's transsexual. How about treating me like a human being and not classifying me by my history? This has been Calpurnia Adams' list of bad questions. Questions you should never ask a transsexual person. Thank you for your attention, and be sure to check back in. I'm sure I'll have more questions to talk about the very next time I run into your dumb ass on the street. Bye.